who do you believe is the MVP in the NBA right now at this current moment in time? Man, I feel like I'm I'm a broken record, and I know that it's kind of been the same thing for the last two seasons, but the man just continues to do it over and over and over. Nikola Jokic at the center position, once again, is at the top of the MVP voting, is at the league's highest for rebounding, assists, scoring. I mean, the man is averaging 25, 11, and 9.7 assists. So basically, a walking triple double at six foot eleven, while at the same time, the man is doing everything in his power to keep the Nuggets at the number one seed. The Nuggets' overall record in the Western Conference, by the way, thirty-two and thirteen, currently on an eight-game win streak, nine and one in their last ten. They have the best home record in the NBA at twenty-one and three. Oh. And the reason his scoring has gone down from last season, he got his best friend back in Jamal Murray. The Nuggets are firing on all cylinders. This man, Nikola Jokic, is doing it in every facet of the way you can possibly imagine, especially in the statistical categories that matter the most. As a center, you got to rebound. you got to block shots. you got to be efficient from inside the paint. And I mean, if you have a couple of assists here and again, which obviously he's well overachieving because he's averaging 10 um, I would say that this is, again, he's making a case to get a third MVP in a row. Is he blowing you away with 30 points a game? Not at all. But there are games where he has flashes, 30-plus. He had a 40-point game. I think he had a 40-20 and 20 game, which was just absolutely nuts a couple of weeks ago. And again, he is a rim protector. So he plays the center position traditionally and non-traditionally <laughs> Because let's be frank, what center in NBA history won back-to-back MVPs and got better each and every season without the second best player on the team? It's not his fault that Jamal Murray was hurt. It's not his fault that Michael Porter Jr. is made of glass. The Nuggets are finally getting healthy at the right time. They're going into the All-Star break within the next couple of weeks as the number one seed. And Nikola Jokic, rightfully so, is at the top of the MVP leader discussions. I mean, you can't ask him to do anything else, honestly, on this team other than actually play every single minute, every single second, and score all their points because he's doing it in every statistical category that matters. Kev, I am going to agree with you. I mean, at this point, I think that Jokic has proven himself to be the leader. It's just when I look at some other players out there in the NBA, I think we do have to mention guys like Luca, uh, Jason Tatum, Giannis are definitely in that discussion. And then absolutely, if you had to pick probably one more, maybe Joel in there, that'd be a pretty good solid top five just with all the guys that we've listed there. But Kev, I remember we were talking about this last year and pretty much I think you could say arguably that this is the same scenario from last year that the MVP is pretty much surrounded by three people. Jokic, Giannis, or Embiid. I think this year it's a little bit different because now we have to throw in guys like Luka and, and Jason Tatum who are all playing Absolutely. at elite levels. But like you said, I, I think it's fair to say just based off of how effective that Jokic has been, I think he deserves that MVP leader or the number one spot in the MVP race at this point in time. There's one thing I do want to say, though, about Jokic. To me, Jokic, he's one of the best centers of this generation. And Kevin and I talked about this last year where he is one of the most effective centers that I've ever seen, just with his effectiveness from shooting the ball and facilitating the ball. You know, the the facilitating part is the crazy part for me because the guy's a center and he's putting up assist numbers like a point guard. He's not their point guard. He facilitates as one, which is kind of crazy. It's just the offense that they run with that high pick and roll in Denver, but it's extremely effective. And usually, you know, when it comes to centers, they're mostly just known for scoring at the rim and rebounding. But the fact that he's added that third piece of assisting into his repertoire, it's crazy that he's able to do it and do it so consistently. However, if... Jokic were to win a third MVP, which he has a very good chance of doing that. I need to see Jokic be the leader to carry the team in Denver specifically, not only to a Western Conference Finals, but to a NBA Finals. The reason why is 
is if he were to win three straight MVPs. Now, I will take into account that for the first two, Jamal Murray was not in that formula, which I will give him a pass on because if you look at the playoff numbers from last year, even though Denver got swept, he wasn't the reason why they lost. But if barring some sort of injury to Michael Porter Jr. or Jamal Murray, let's say they run into the playoffs as a high seed in the Western Conference and there's no injuries whatsoever. They are running a healthy roster and they fall short of making a Western Conference Finals or an NBA Finals. I believe the narrative about Jokic getting that third MVP, while he may get it, there may be a sentiment out there where some people are looking at him. It's like, dude, you have to get your team into a position to not only compete for a Western Conference Finals, but potentially an NBA Finals. I mean, I understand Giannis was in that MVP discussion last year, and he led the Bucs not only to an Eastern Conference Finals appearance, but he led them to an NBA Finals championship. And with Jokic, I think that this is a good opportunity for him. It's just, I don't want to see him fall short in that because I know what the narrative is going to be. People are going to go out there and say that you win three straight MVPs, but you can't lead your team into a situation where they're co- consistently competing for a Western Conference Finals or an NBA Finals. And I think that is fair to say. And mind you, I think that Jokic is one of the best centers that we've seen of this generation. The point that I'm making is, is that he has to prove that he could play consistently like he does in the regular season and do it in the postseason and get the Denver Nuggets into a situation where they compete for a finals. If he does that, I think he fully deserves that MVP. And I mean, based, just based off of what he'll do in the regular season, he'll probably deserve it. It's just, I think the narrative is going to flip when we get to the playoffs and he falls short and the Denver Nuggets fall short. Because if that's the case, people are going to start looking around like, why didn't Giannis get it? Why didn't Luka get it? Why didn't Jason Tatum get it? That's the part that I think could rear its ugly head against Jokic if they fall short, if the Denver Nuggets fall short. And, you know, hypothetically, he falls short in the playoffs, which I don't foresee happening because the playoff stats don't lead me to believe that way. But, We'll see what happens when comes playoff time. You know, the MVP, it's a regular season award. And I think he's definitely on his way to claiming another MVP. But there are some other players out there. Jason Tatum's having a phenomenal year. They have the best record in the NBA with the Boston Celtics. And he's a huge leader for that. Luka is definitely in that discussion. Giannis is in that discussion. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for the rest of the year. But I will say, as of right yeah, as of right now, Jokic is the leader. But if he were to get another one, I want to see him succeed in that Western Conference Finals and NBA Finals scenario that I laid out. But I'll just leave it at that. But Jokic is the favorite right now as far as I see it. 